can't find nothing on the radio. Ready, Steve? Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Welcome to Songology. He's Bruce. He's Richard. And this is another episode from our Song of the Day archives. Enjoy. Welcome back, Bruce. It's been dog week. What do we have today? Your dog of the day is Sally. Sally. Yes, and we're going to have Sally lay down. Ah. Because, of course, Eric Clapton's lay down Sally, right? Oh. Now, yeah. I freely admit that I might be cheating on this one. Okay. Because I heard that this was actually inspired by a dog and somebody telling a dog named Sally to lay down. But when I was snooping around to see facts about this, the Internet sort of calls this into question and says maybe it isn't. But I'll tell you what made me decide that I was going to go with it anyway and provide you with a full confession. Yeah. And that is my alternative was Elvis Presley singing Old Shep. Uh-huh. And quite apart from the fact that we just had Elvis doing Hound Dog, Old Shep is probably my candidate for the all-time most depressing song ever recorded by anyone ever. <laughs> it's just really, really a downer. And you've brought up a few really depressing songs. So, uh, oh, the that's... Old Shep puts them all to shame. <laughs> So you we'll know, go down with Sally. We actually uh, looked after a dog named Sally for a summer for the animal rescue group. Well, she was go. recovering from surgery, and she was a wonderful dog. Did she jump up a lot? You had to tell her to lay down? Or? No, she had hip surgery, so. <laughs> she probably liked to lay down. Yes. Well, Eric Clapton. How much do you know about Eric Clapton? Not a lot. Oh, well, there you go. He was born in Surrey. He is the illegitimate son of a Canadian soldier. Oh. Someday, if we get around to doing the song My Father's Eyes, that's kind of what that's about, is his search for his dad. He never knew his dad. No. In fact, it was one of those situations where he was brought up by his maternal grandparents, thinking that his maternal grandparents were his parents, and uh -huh. his mother was his much older sister. Yeah. Kind of one of those situations. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, it was revealed to him, and it was a bit of a shock to young Eric. And it is said that that's one of the reasons, he, sort of the shock to his identity, is one of the reasons why he turned to the blues and blues music. Blues music is really, really huge in Eric Clapton's life. I mean, it is said that if you start talking music with Eric Clapton and you don't know who Robert Johnson is, he won't talk to you. I've heard that, yes. <laughs> Yes. So Eric taught himself to play guitar, given to understand. He went to Kingston Art College and studied stained glass design, of all things. Hmm. But that was where he also taught himself to play the guitar. His nickname, do you remember his nickname? We often do nicknames, right? I do not remember, remember Eric his Clapton's nickname. nickname? No. Slow hand, right? Because although he's one of the faster guitar players of his generation, the nickname he picked up, the manager started calling him that when he was playing with the Yardbirds back in the early, uh, early to middle 60s. The story goes that he got the nickname because in those days, he was often breaking strings because he would be bending the guitar strings in extreme ways in his various solos and so forth. Then he'd break the string. Yep. He'd have to go backstage and change strings. And British audiences would often, while they're sitting there waiting, they would do this slow hand clap until he returned, right? <laughs> so the slow hand clap. Yeah. Then he got, they started, oh, come on, slow hand, get going kind of thing. He's the only person, Clapton is the only person to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame three times. They won't let Chicago in, but they put in Eric three times. Three times, right. right. <laughs> Just make sure, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's in as a solo artist, he's in as a member of the Yardbirds, and he's in, in as a member of Cream. Uh-huh. So, yeah, it's, they must have a wing in that place dedicated to Eric Clapton. <laughs> also, curious connection with Stevie. Remember we saw Stevie Ray Vaughan live in Calgary all those years ago? Yep. Eric Clapton played with Stevie Ray Vaughan the night Stevie died. Oh. They were on tour. They were at a particular concert, and Stevie Ray Vaughan was really in a big hurry to get back to the hotel. Everybody was flying on different helicopters. The helicopter that was leaving first was supposed to take Eric's tour manager. He knew that Stevie was really keen to get back to the hotel. Well, you take mine, and I'll take your seat on the next one kind of thing. And that was the helicopter that crashed. Hmm. So, alas, poor Stevie, right? Yes. Also, we, we were talking at one stage about weird things that uh, bands demand to have on tour with yes. them. Yes, yes. Eric Clapton in 1995, the thing that he demanded was a special room set up for his foosball table. 
<laughs> so Eric's quite the foosball guy. So the song itself, Lay Down Sally, is a song that was written basically to emulate the style of J.J. Kale. Now, I don't know if you know J.J. Kale. No. Oh, great Oklahoma musician, great uh, bluesy sort of a guy. We'll get to J.J. Kale at some point in Song of the Day, too. In fact, um, Eric and J.J. made an album together, which is called The Road to Escondido, and it's just brilliant, wonderful stuff. Anyway, Eric describes Lay Down Sally as as close as an Englishman could get to being J.J. Kale. <laughs> So this was something he got together. He wrote it together with one of his backup singers, a lady by the name of Marcy Levy. She had actually toured with Bob Seger, so other connections there. And a guitarist in Eric's band called George Terry. Actually, last bit of Eric Clapton trivia before Sally lays down here. Once upon a time, when Eric was touring as a member of a band, they were on a multi-group tour. There was an outfit called the Blues Project. Clapton's band was touring with Blues Project. Yeah. They took a break, and three guys, Eric Clapton, Steve Katz from Blues Project, and Al Cooper, another musician, they took off between sets to go to the local music store, right? Yeah. They're a little late to getting back. Now, this is 67, so just end of Yardbirds, beginning of Cream. Yeah. Fates for Eric. They're a little late getting back. We're jumping out of the cab. Steve Katz hurrying, right? He yeah. fires the door shut, closes the door on Eric's right hand. Oh. <laughs> and so Eric is trapped in the cab with his hand stuck in the door. Yeah. Steve hears the howl of pain, whirls around, realizes what's happened, gets the door open. And by some miracle, not only does he not have broken bones in his hand, it hasn't even broken the skin. Huh. Now, Steve feels terrible. Yeah. <laughs> for the whole rest of the tour. But imagine for a moment. That you were the guy that broke Eric Clapton's hand. <laughs> Think how, you, how you'd feel. That would be terrible. Mm -hmm. Anyway, enough Eric Clapton trivia. Let's get Sally to lay down for us. <laughs> And as usual, I have to stop it right there due to the wonderful world of fair use rules. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. You can visit us on Facebook or head over to our website, songology.ca. Now, here's your chance to listen to the music or go on to the next episode. <laughs>